The global economy is fracturing, and within months, everyone is going to feel the effects. Worldwide supply shortages are causing the manufacturing of critical technologies to either slow or cease. I'm talking mobile devices, medical equipment, cars, computational circuitry, military hardware, and much more. This will touch almost every aspect of your life. There is a solution, but we need to work together to solve it. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host Sean Kenny and before we get started I want to ask you to hit the like button and drop a comment below. Ask me anything you want. Your comments feed me as well as the great and powerful YouTube algorithm that shares our content with viewers like you. And that's needed because this is an important episode. Like really important. If you clicked on this video you likely have an interest in a basic understanding of technology. Maybe you've built your own gaming rigs or render stations and you can probably guess where this episode is going. And if that's not the case, fear not because I'm about to explain what's going on and how we got here. The world has been a pretty turbulent place in the last 15 months, and the pandemic has affected all of us in some form or another. Global trade and shipping have been greatly reduced, and as a result, vital goods and supplies are having trouble reaching the shores of Western nations. Among these are semiconductors and electronics components from China that we are heavily reliant on. We're already seeing the negative ramifications of this. Tesla has been forced to halt production of its vehicles, and Toyota stated in January that it only has enough chips available to last for four months. GM and Ford have seen automotive sales drop 33% due to manufacturing reductions as well. Mobile device manufacturers like Apple and Samsung are feeling similar strain, along with manufacturers of motherboards, graphics cards, medical diagnostic equipment, and highly sensitive components used in U.S. military hardware such as optical targeting arrays. This is pretty serious from a national security standpoint. Now at this point you may be asking, how could things have gotten this bad? The answer is simple. Three decades of bad trade policy, the allure of cost reductions from cheap labor leading to the outsourcing of manufacturing to China, and the CCP radically subsidizing its companies to take over market share. All these things have led to China taking over every aspect of supply and manufacturing of these critical components. We've talked about CCP tactics and taking over market share of multiple industries in the past. China still has way too much control in this industry, and by too much, I mean 99%. To be clear, I'm not anti-trade. I'm not even entirely against companies outsourcing manufacturing to other countries. Globalization has brought about some really positive benefits around the world. However, when a country, especially a country like China, is the sole provider of any valuable resource or commodity, it can lead to negative global ramifications. We knew this was going to happen eventually. COVID just accelerated things and brought them to light faster. We need to stop the bleeding and begin implementing long-term solutions to balance things out so we don't feel the brunt of the supply shortage in the future. In episode four, I state how the previous administration signed several executive orders, including ones that got the Department of Defense to directly assist the funding of a rare earth refinery. That's a good start, and I hope we continue to move in this direction. And in early February 2021, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm signed a letter to the White House urging the Biden administration to do something in regards to the shortage. After meeting House and Senate members from both sides of the aisle last week, the president signed an executive order to distribute $37 billion over an unspecified period and pledged to work with ally nations to address the chip bottleneck. But that's not all. He has also urged Congress to work together to pass the CHIPS Act, which stands for Creating a Helping Hand to Produce Semiconductors. The act was pushed forward by Republican Congressman Michael T. McCall and calls for $22 billion worth of tax incentives to encourage the domestic manufacturing of microelectronics over the next five years while ensuring supply chain security. In the United States Senate, we've seen overwhelming bipartisan support for the American Foundries Act. Sponsored by Republican Senator Tom Cotton, the bill allocates another $25 billion in funds to resolve the issue. The Department of Commerce would be given the ability to issue grants and funding for states looking to support the domestic manufacturing of these critical materials. Lastly, the bill prohibits firms that are owned, controlled, or influenced by the Chinese government or other foreign adversaries from accessing funds appropriated by this bill. 
This whole situation has been frustrating from an economic standpoint. However, this is one of the few issues that politicians from both sides seem to be coming together on. To me, this is great because it shows that there could be a chance to push legislation in the right direction. And amidst this new political climate, the winds are shifting in favor of a re-domestification of electronics manufacturing, which in turn is getting more capital into the hands of future suppliers. USA Rare Earths is looking to go public with an IPO that could raise any Anywhere between 300 and 500 million dollars. This is expected to fund the development of a new rare earth mine in Round Top, Texas, which plans on opening for business in less than two years. MP Materials Corp., which controls California's Mountain Pass mine, went public last year in a deal worth nearly one and a half billion dollars. With the news of these serious efforts being put forward, its stock price has more than doubled from where it was in November. Could it get any better? Well, I suppose if a member of Congress wanted to push a revenue neutral bill onto the floor, specifically one similar to Marco Rubio's Rare Earth Cooperative Act, I guess while you're at it, you could include some language that allows the development of a storage depot for all that waste thorium from those rare earth mines. Maybe create a company with some congressional authority to develop markets and uses for that waste thorium and create a legislative pathway for the development of American-made molten salt reactors. I guess what I'm saying is that if there were ever a moment to go and do something like that, now would probably be the best time seeing as you would get almost zero pushback, especially seeing as Biden and members of both parties are looking to push for more economic and regulatory incentives to develop these materials domestically. If we could see the development of a new clean energy economy that could increase our country's economic and industrial output to levels hitherto undreamt of, and maybe cure cancer as an added side benefit, is there really any reason why we shouldn't pass a bill like that? Let me know in the comments below. And in case you had no idea what the hell I was just talking about, go ahead and take a look at this episode we did last year talking about the Rare Earth Cooperative Act. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic.